Welcome back to World Drum Club. I'm Kalani Das, your host and teacher, and I'm so pleased to be able to share some amazing lessons with my friend, fellow Los Angeles percussionist, Brad Dutz. I've known Brad a long time. He's been playing percussion a zillion years. Super talented guy, passionate about music. I want you to go check out Brad's stuff after you finish watching this. I'm gonna give you some links below, and I'm gonna remind you again at the end of each one of these videos. This is a three-part series. We did a lot of videos. This is about bones. So let's get into the first lesson and I'll see you um, afterwards, but enjoy this lesson from Brad. Hello, thank you so much for letting me come on World Drum Club. I'm thrilled to be here. This is a very um, unusual instrument. It's getting a little more popular, but it's so old, people aren't even sure how old or where it started. And all that you can find on, you can look at some theories on websites. But these are bones and these are can be all kinds of things. They can be goat ribs, they can be uh, cow shin. Um, we have them made now out of rosewood, ebony, slate, and metal, and even plastic. And there's a lot of different players who play bones a whole lot of different ways. You can play one-handed or two-handed, and I just prefer to play two-handed because then you have two different sounds. And there's a bunch of different grips. So one grip is with one finger in the middle, another grip, of course, two, and there are even some players that do three. And they all sound a little bit different. So three fingers, and then two fingers, and one. So you see the pitch changes quite a bit because of the chamber here. There's just all, all types of different philosophies of playing bones. These I found, um, and these are from Goat, and these are, uh, cow shin made by a great uh, bone maker, Stephen Brown. And um, you can see almost every pair of bones is curved. And so you hold, you hold them away from each other so they appear like this, right? Like two upside down boats or something, right? And because that way they don't, they can hit each other much easier. This is the kind of so this is this is, would be the basic grip that I learned with two fingers. It's, I found for me it's the easiest way to play, and I like to play both hands. So since I have bones and wooden ones, I usually don't use the same pair just for more m musical variety. So this is like a heavy ebony, and these are regular cow shin. So you have this sound. And bones, again, you can, uh, they appeared in this country around the turn of the century in minstrel shows, but now they're quite uh, popular in Irish folk music still to this day. So the grip, the, the wrist is back, really. You don't really play this way because you're, you're, it's going to be really hard to move the bone, so you move your wrist back. And then also, you can, you can play different angles, but the most comfortable is just, you know, with your hands there and then tilting your wrist back, and you're like throwing almost like waving, the kind of the waving, same waving action. And the really key, I think, to, to, to really clean and precise bones performance is this one always stays tight. Your first finger and your thumb keep this one pretty much solid. This is the one that does all the moving. So I would call outside and inside. So really, you can see when I, when I throw my hand, this one flops up and hits it, but this is solid. So I won't drop this one. Uh, uh, sometimes beginners will accidentally drop it. It's okay. You just got to get used to the how much pressure you apply. And see, I lightly put my uh, small finger and ring finger on there. But uh, again, if you do this way, it's totally different. So this is just what I prefer. And this is loose, but it's secure. If that is that possible? <laughs> loose, but secure. So when you throw, the the bottom one comes up. And then when you come back, the bottom one flips up and goes down, so you get this sound. Then the odd part, this is hard to teach and sort of I try to explain, is the mystery middle note. 
that happens as a reflection from the beginning, right? It's basically just bouncing layer and I'm, my grip is loose enough so it, there's the initial strike on my way back so it's loose enough, it rebounds and gravity changes the angle and then it comes there. So you just, most of my students, I just try to get them practicing to get it to feel loose enough, but you can't drop it. And then, and then it's super hard slow, which probably is impossible. <laughs> so, so that's why we learn single strokes. So for me, maybe my slowest speed, if I want a slower speed, I gotta start making a really big motion. So by having single strokes, I can play a slow triplet that way. Or with two, two hands. Then we can do apply all our drum rudiments, flams, you know, flam taps, right, triplets, sixteenths. And so this the the single note is really important to get the clarity. So instead of playing triplets all the time, we want to stop and start by getting a clean note. Yeah? So that way you have this note and you can stop this way too. Out, in. And that's really the, the practice of the bones is just really getting the feel of it. It's a great instrument. All right, that was a great intro. The next part, we're gonna be doing more on rhythms, traditional rhythms, and how to play different patterns. But I want you to go check out Brad's stuff, especially all of his music over at Bandcamp. There's a link below. Brad is a writer. He's got like 30 albums worth of stuff, or maybe even more by now, but it's really cool, and I want you guys to go get inspired. And the way you do that is to listen to music. Check out some of his videos if he's got them online or on his Facebook page, but go check it out. Uh, it's really worth it, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. So check out Brad's stuff, and I'll see you again in part two.